So a lot of X applications have a very bad habit of wiping the system clipboard when they close. Now this is intended behavior, but I find it to be really, really annoying. So normally what will happen is I'm trying to copy something from a web browser. I accidentally close it and then I try to paste it into a terminal or a document. And I realize my clipboard is now completely empty. I have to restart the process all over again. So what we're looking at today is an application called Clip Menu, which basically keeps track of the clipboard separate from the system clipboard. And because it does this, it also allows you to have a clipboard history. So this works in a very similar way to a lot of other Linux applications where you have a client server model. So in the background, I'm running an application called Clip Menu D. And Clip Menu D is basically a server daemon that keeps track of every single time I try to copy something. And then this right here is called Clip Menu. So Clip Menu is just a client to access all of those things. Now Clip Menu is sort of just a wrapper around some other sort of launcher. So right now I'm using D Menu, but you could also use it with something like FCF, Rofi or Rofi script or really anything that's sort of compatible with D menu. I haven't tested it with anything else, but if you're using one of the D menu clones, it probably will still work. So the way this works is a little something like this. So let's say I wanted to go select something from my existing history. Let's say I want to select this line right here. And in D menu, the way you do that is just pressing enter on it. And what that's done is actually gone and modified my system clipboard. So it doesn't go and actually print it out to the window that you're in. It will just go and modify your existing clipboard. And then from this point, you can just go and paste that. And if you want to go and add something to that list, all you have to do is just go and select it and then copy it. However you copy in your application. In my case, I do that with control Y. And then if we bring it back open, as you can see, that line has now been added into clip menu. So if you are planning to use this for yourself, I would really recommend launching Clip Menu D from something like your Xnet RC just to make sure that it's always running in the background. You could set it up as a System D job if you wanted to, but I feel like that's a little bit excessive for what we're doing today. And also I'd recommend having a key binding for Clip Menu. I've got that in SXHKD, but the same will apply if you're using something like i3 or DWM. Just make it so you have a key binding of some sort, just so it's a little bit easier to access this so you don't have to run the command every single time you want to launch it. Now, Clip Menu D and Clip Menu don't actually have any options for themselves. So if we look at the help menu for Clip Menu, just the regular one, I guess. Uh, and as you can see, all the configuration is done through environment variables. And if we go and have a look at Clip Menu D, the same is gonna be true here as well. It has no options and all of the configuration is done through environment variables. So when you actually pass options into Clip Menu, so for example, dash FN, that's how you actually set a font for D menu. So when you run Clip Menu, every single option you pass into it will be passed directly to your launcher. So if you wanna configure Rofi or FCF, all of that is gonna work just fine. And I presume that if you're using any other sort of launcher, it will still pass all of the options through to that launcher. So if you're using some, I don't know, custom D menu or something like that, it should still work just fine. As for me, I'm running a fork of D menu, so all of my configuration that I've done to D menu was done directly in the code anyway, so it wasn't really that big of a deal for me in the first place. So as for these environment variables, they'll be set as you'd expect them to be. In my case, they're going to be done in the ZSH emp file, but if you're on bash, you'll do it in your bash profile, and if you're on fish, I don't know, go ask a fish user. I presume it's something like your fish profile, but ask someone in the comment section down below if you have no idea. So I'm using a couple of options right now. So the first one I've got is CM selections. And this one is basically gonna let you decide which clipboards to actually read from. So if you don't know, X actually makes use of three different clipboards. So you've got your primary, your secondary, and your clipboard. So your primary is basically anything that you visually select. The secondary, not really ever used, and the clipboard is anything that you actually copy. So by default, it's gonna read from the primary and the clipboard, so it'll be set up like this. So primary space clipboard. I don't really like it like that. I just like it to read from my regular clipboard, so I just set it to the clipboard itself. But if you do wanna have multiple, it's a space separated list by their names. So primary, secondary, and clipboard. CM debug is basically just going to enable debugging mode. So zero means it's going to be off, one means it's going to be on. And debugging mode is just going to make it so if you run clip menu D in a terminal, it'll tell you what you've actually copied. And that's just to make sure that you've got the correct clipboards actually selected. Normally you can just go and disable this and I'm just going to go and do so now. 
So output clip is gonna decide whether the text gets output to standard out or just to your clipboard. It's always gonna be pushed to your clipboard, but if you set this to one, then it's also gonna be printed out to standard out. So that means that you could have it be passed into a script or something like that, and then do some sort of processing on the text and then add it to your clipboard again, or maybe, I don't know, output it to the screen directly or something like that, whatever it is that you wanna do with a command like that. And then CM max clips is pretty self-explanatory. That's just the maximum number of clips to actually remember. By default, it's set to a thousand, but I'm never going to go a thousand things back in my history. So I decided to just lower it down to 10. There's also a CM underscore hist length option. This is basically gonna be the number of visible clips inside of your launcher. So you could say have a maximum number of a thousand being saved and then only show the first hundred, for example. Personally, I don't really see a point of this because if I'm going to be saving them, I might as well have some way to select them. So if you don't like using DMenu as your launcher, you can also use the CM launcher environment variable to basically change that to another program. So you could set it to FCF, Rofi, or Rofi script. These are known to work. But as I said, anything that is DMenu compliant should work. So basically that means any application where if you pipe text into it, it's going to show it as a bunch of lines and then you can go and select one of the lines. There's a bunch of applications out there that do that. I'm not going to list them here though. And the last one we have is cm underscore ignore underscore window. And this is going to accept a regex. And this is basically going to try to match on a window name and anything matched by that regex, it won't actually remember any of the clips from. So you could say, have this for your password manager or something like that, because you probably don't want to save your passwords in a plain text history file like this. So you could go and match on those windows and then it will ignore them. And the other way you can do that is by just running clip ctl disable. Now clip ctl is a separate application from clip menu and clip menu D, but when you go and download the clip menu package, all of these will be included. So clip ctl disable is just going to temporarily disable clip menu D. So if we go and just run that, and now let's try to copy this text right here, try it a bunch of times, and then bring up clip menu, as we're going to see that text isn't actually in here. But let's go and re-enable this again. So just passing in enable, and if we try to copy this right now, as you can see, the text actually is in the list right here. And it comes with one other application as well called ClipFSCK, but I have no idea what this is supposed to do. It has zero documentation. When you run it, it doesn't output anything. So I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to be doing. If someone knows, then feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. So that's pretty much everything for what the application does, but I do have one slight problem with it, or I guess I have a problem with whoever decided to make the Arch Linux package. So DMenu is an optional dependency for this application. If I don't want to use DMenu, I could use Rofi or FCF. But for whatever reason, DMenu has been made a dependency of this package. So I've actually got two versions of DMenu installed right now. I've got the vanilla version and I've got my fork. So I would like it to be an optional dependency just so I can decide what I actually want to use. And for the people who want to use Rofi, there's no reason for them to have to go and download DMenu if they're never going to use it anyway. I could go and switch to the manual installation method because all of these applications are just shell scripts, but I would like to see the package actually being fixed. So I've been thinking about trying this out or something similar for quite a while because that clipboard problem has been really, really annoying me. Even though I know it's there, I still manage to fall for it every so often and I have to go and reopen windows and recopy stuff and it's just a bit of a hassle. But once I started using clip menu, because I don't have to worry about the system clipboard anymore, basically it's a non-issue. So if you are experiencing the same problem, I would really recommend trying out Clip Menu or one of the alternatives out there. I might do a video on those as well, but Clip Menu seems to do everything that I want it to do. So it seems to be a pretty decent application. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Montezar Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony Donald, John, Marek, Mikhail, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe stuff, my coin tree, and all of that sort of stuff as well. I've got my podcast that is Tech Over T available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version is available basically anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. And this channel is available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute if you don't want to watch it on YouTube, because why would you want to watch it on YouTube? So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.